Landing a GovTech job overseas is not only possible, it's one of the fastest ways to accelerate your career and your bank account. Because while everybody is competing for the same jobs in the States, there's a whole world of opportunity that most people don't even know exists. I've been in the GovTech industry for over 16 years, and I've seen people with only help desk experience land high six-figure overseas contracts that completely change their life. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to position yourself for these roles, which certifications matter matters for overseas government contracts and the step-by-step -step process to land your first international GovTech job. Let's get right into it. Many people have never heard about overseas government contracting. I started making videos about being an overseas government contractor on TikTok and Instagram about three years ago, and it got me so much attention that I was able to gain 100,000 followers in just a few months. Also, Business Insider reached out to me to do an interview covering my life story and how I became an overseas government contractor. So if you don't know what overseas government contracting is, this is basically when you go work overseas and you sign a 12 month contract to work for a government contractor company and your first $125,000 a year is completely tax free. Since your first $125,000 a year is tax free, you're able to build a lot of wealth overseas. And not only is your first $125,000 a year tax free, but you also have your housing paid for, your transportation paid for, and your food paid for while you're overseas as well. And depending on which company you work for, if it's a good government contractor company, they also give you a stipend to travel. Typically, I was given about $2,500 a year to travel and leave the country while I was working overseas. And this is just for visa purposes, but good government contractor companies, they will pay you to travel while you're overseas as well. So a lot of people have no idea about this overseas government contractor world, and there is a huge demand for overseas government contractors. Right now, there are a lot of different programs popping up overseas and a lot of different companies that are purchasing systems from government contractor companies like Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, even North of Grumman. If you work for any of these companies, you're able to work overseas and get paid a lot of money for it. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg because there are so many companies that have contracts overseas and they work underneath these big government contractors. And I'm sure you might be thinking, well, how would I be able to get one of these jobs isn't everybody trying to work overseas but that's not the case one most people don't even know about overseas government contracting work and two most people don't want to leave and go overseas because they want to just stay in the states so if you're somebody who is willing to go overseas you can bring your family with you depending on where you live at overseas then you have a lot of opportunity since there aren't a lot of people that want to work overseas once you get your first contract you're pretty much set for life so there are a lot of different countries that you can work in overseas overseas. Myself, I've worked in Japan, Taiwan, and South Korea. You can also work in countries like the UAE. You can work in the Philippines. You can work in Bahrain, Oman, Jordan, Kuwait, Qatar, Germany, London, France. There's literally so many countries that you can work in. There's hundreds of countries that are out there that are buying our systems. And if there's a U.S. military base in the country, you can safely assume that there's going to be overseas government contractor opportunities. Typically, when you work overseas, whatever your base salary is, you're going to make double that amount. So let's say your base salary is $70,000 a year, you'll make $140,000 overseas. So that is a huge reason why a lot of people like to go live overseas because you're making double the money, you have no bills, and you aren't paying taxes on the first $125,000. And the best part about it is you don't even need a ton of experience to land an overseas government contractor role. You literally only need six to eight months of help desk experience, the Security Plus certification, and I recommend that you do try to get sponsored for a clearance in the States before you try to go overseas, but I have seen people be able to get their first job overseas without having a government security clearance already. So if you have six to eight months of help desk experience and you have the Security Plus, you can definitely go and start applying for jobs overseas. You can look on different sites like Vectris and you can look on clearancejobs.com. Now again, these are government contracts companies. These are not federal government roles. A lot of people tend to get that confused. You're not going to be looking at usajobs.gov. You're going to be looking for jobs with government contractor companies, and you will be an employee with benefits and all of that good stuff, right? So you're not going to be somebody who's 1099. You'll be a W-2 employee on a 12-month contract overseas with the option to extend if you go overseas and the company decides to keep having you overseas. I've had multiple students that have 
landed overseas government contractor jobs that have literally changed their life. David, he was able to go from making $14 an hour working at Best Buy to making $269,000 a year overseas in Kuwait. And this can happen really, really quickly. It doesn't take two, three, four years like a lot of people think. I also had another student, his name is Dez. He reached out to me recently and said that he landed a contract overseas that's gonna pay him $30,000 per month. So there's a lot of opportunity overseas right now and this is the golden era of overseas government contracting and you do not wanna miss out on this. Working overseas for two to three years can completely change your life. You'll come back to the States debt-free. Some of my coworkers had their houses paid off completely and their cars paid off completely. So if this is something that you're interested in and if you want access to my list of international government contractors that are actively hiring, plus the overseas job board resources and networking templates that I've helped my students land these roles, click the first link in the description to apply to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. Let's get into the step-by-step -step process of landing your first GovTech job overseas. Step number one, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have the right type of tech certifications because in GovTech, certifications do matter a lot. So you're gonna need to have the Security Plus certification as a bare minimum certification just to even look at jobs overseas. And remember, you do need at least six to eight months of experience to work overseas as well. So most of the jobs that are overseas are pure IT jobs. So you'll find help desk jobs. You will also find networking jobs. You'll find system administrator jobs, cybersecurity jobs. And those are most of the jobs that you'll find while you're overseas. So if you want to stand out even more overseas, after you get the Security Plus certification, you can also pick up the CYSA Plus certification as well. And for the system administrator roles, they might want you to have either the Linux Plus certification or the Red Hat certified sysadmin cert or even the CompTIA Server Plus certification. Once you have the experience and the certifications, you can start applying for these jobs that are overseas. Step number two, you want to identify the key government contractors that have contracts overseas. And you can literally do this by going on to clearancejobs.com and typing in overseas. You'll see a lot of different companies come up. You also want to pay attention to what's happening in the news as well. If you've seen Golden Dome or Iron Dome and you see the companies that are involved in that, these companies are also hiring nonstop right now overseas. So start paying attention to the news and start paying attention to which companies are landing these major overseas government contracts and pay attention to the countries overseas that are working with our U.S. government contractor companies and that will give you a good idea on what you should be doing. So if you want to find the companies that are winning these overseas government contracts, you literally can just Google overseas government contract awarded to government contractor company or you can Google the country that you're interested in working in and searching government contractor roles for that country. So let's say you're interested in working in Germany, you can Google Germany government contractors and find a full list of companies that are winning contracts in Germany. A big part of going overseas is having the right personality to actually work overseas. It kind of sounds funny, but really some people just aren't cut out for living overseas. So what the companies want to see is that one, you're an independent person. They also want to see that you're somebody who is willing to figure out things on your own and you don't have to always take direction from other people. There are going to be other people overseas on your team working with you, but it's going to be a very small team. So you do need to be somebody who's very proactive in your thinking and very proactive in your day-to-day -day work. While you're interviewing, you definitely want to talk about how your technical skills are going to allow you to stand out while you're overseas. And you definitely want to talk about just how you enjoy traveling and how you wouldn't mind being away from your family because a lot of people end up going overseas and then coming back home within the first 90 days. So you really want to make sure that this is something that you really want to do. And you might be wondering, well, am I able to even go back to the States while I'm overseas? And the answer is yes. You're able to travel back home whenever you get PTO and the companies also give you a travel stipend as well. So for me, I was able to travel back to the States pretty much whenever I wanted to just because I was able to line up a good schedule with my team and I was able to build up what we call modification time to have more time off to be able to travel. But I was able to travel so much while I was overseas, I enjoyed every second of it. And now at this point in my career, I do short-term overseas government contracts where I'm overseas for one to six months at a time. But before you can get to short-term contracts, you will need to do a 12-month contract. Applying for jobs overseas is the same way that you would apply for jobs in the States. But one of the big things is, of course, you're going to need to have a passport and you also need to be a U.S. citizen to do 
these type of roles. So make sure you have your passport ready to go because they're definitely going to want to make sure you have your passport before they give you an offer. Because once you get your job offer, you typically will deploy overseas within three to four weeks after getting the job offer. So do not wait on getting your passport if this is something that you want to do. While most people are fighting over the same crowded positions in the States, you now know about this entire world of international GovTech contracts that can transform your career. The demand is there, the pay is incredible, and the experience will set you apart for the rest of your career. That's exactly why I'm offering you the chance to work with me one-on-one. -on -one. I'll help you find the best overseas and U.S. positions that will help you accelerate your GovTech career so that way you can land high-paying GovTech roles. To apply, just click the first link in the description and I'll see you in the next video.